Hey, there it is. Hey, everybody. Once again, live here on... Don't go into the light. Anyway, what, live on this Facebook on this Tuesday. What is today? 26th? 27th? Something That's like that. 26th. 26th of April, we have from the lovely state of Arizona, Tucson, Arizona. Every time I say the word Tucson, I feel like I should be wearing a cowboy hat. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. All right, Catherine Donovan. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. And I feel, I feel it necessary to, to mention also my uh, national convention buddy and flight partner all the way there. We're <laughs> looking at each other in the airport. I know you. And then we're on the second flight. And then the there flight back. back. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so tell us a little about yourself, how long you've been doing this, all that good stuff, please. Oh, um, I've been in real estate for 13 years. I got my license in 2009. Uh, I lived in Sierra Vista, Arizona most of my life and owned several businesses down there. But uh, as what happened to most people in 2008, the economy uh, tanks there a little bit. And so I uh, had to sell off my businesses. I owned a photography business, Donovan Photography, which was mine. And I owned a dealership, Donovan Chrysler Dodge. And I owned an Irish pub, <laughs> which was fun. Um, but again, with the downfall of the economy, uh, sold it all and moved to Tucson to reinvent myself. I started off uh, working on my MBA at the U of A. And uh, my husband had said, why don't I check out real estate? He's a real estate developer and was a custom home builder. And so I, I went for it, got my license, and the dream has just been going on since then. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. So and your, your husband is like, um, helps you out a little bit now, but mostly retired, right? Yes, he's retiring in June. And that's what's so exciting about this upcoming year is uh, he's going to be working with me, um, uh, uh, being, being my assistant, but don't tell him. Yes. <laughs> hopefully he's not watching. <laughs> yeah, no. But uh, he knows, he knows. No, he'll be, uh, the exciting thing is he's going to be able to take care of all my transaction paperwork with the dear, dear Skyslope relationship that I have <laughs> that, you know, sometimes it just gets a little difficult because I'm out there selling and doing a lot of things out there. So, but uh, he's going to be doing that. And also he's been helping me throughout the years, especially like when I would get a home inspection report, uh, he would look it over because he's an engineer. He knew what was important and actually would talk to my clients and walk them through it. And it gave them more of an, uh, a, a sense of peace that they understood what the home inspection report was all about. And so he'll continue that with me. Cool. You can, you can just say it as a top producer, you're administratively challenged. It's okay. I, um, yes, I, I was too. Like, I was uh -huh. too. I used to call it the toxic, the toxic part of the business. Oh, it's not so much that it's just, I'm just, I'm like this. I want to go, go, go. I want more buyers, more sellers. I, I want, I'm more good with my clients than paperwork, but that's okay. <laughs> right. And we're going to assume that your husband is a civil engineer. Civil. He's a civil engineer, so he knows how to cross the T's, dot the I's. And uh, so I won't have any email saying I had something wrong with something with my paperwork. <laughs> right. right. And, and I was jokingly mean civil meaning nice. He's civil. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. The civil engineers, they, they are, uh, yes, he's socially uh, wonderful with people. Yes. That's great. And an engineer. Wow, that's a great combination. Yes, yes. And as a matter of fact, he's really helped me out. Um, when when somebody has a new home build, um, there's so many phases to the new home build that he actually would go to the home sites and look over the construction and make sure the electrical was correct, the plumbing, what, um, and he would uh, look at the elevation. And so that was that's been a big advantage with my business. Nice. Awesome. Love it. All right. So give us a little idea. Like, okay, so last year, what'd you do and how you did it and all that good stuff, please. I know you have your notes. She's, she's peeking at her notes. <laughs> no, actually they're right there. Oh, okay. um, I did 20 million last year um, right. by myself. Um, it was a lot of work, um, but I enjoy, I, I enjoyed every bit of it. Um, this year is going to be different. Um, I just got my luxury certification. So I have a brand new marketing program that um, since, again, I have my husband to back me up, um, I'm going to be marketing more towards luxury and also uh, more service orientated 
um, which has been my prime positive uh, resource with, with my clients. And let me explain to you what that is. Yes. You know, a lot of agents, they just, they go into a listing appointment and the first thing they do is they go through their booklet. They, they, they're not listening to their audience. They're, they're not reading the room. The mm. first, I let the clients talk. And the first thing is, um, we, we don't know how to fix up our home. We know that we need the eaves painted. We know that we need to do the floors. Being service orientated, it's like they're already going through a huge transition mm -hmm. and it's very scary for them. And uh, the one thing that I do is I take care of it for them. Um, that when we walk through the house, I write my list and it's like, I will be calling my people and they will be calling you with estimates. I'll just take care of it from here. Um, it, it is, it's so important that with real estate agents, it's not just about getting that listing signed up. It's about what is their main concern? Right. And if their main concern is that 1964 Chrysler car, that was their grandfather's in the, in the garage, and they have no idea how to move it because they lost the key, be resourceful that mm. it's like, that's okay. I'm going to call somebody. They'll come out here, make a key. And um, here's a list of service carriers that can uh, move the vehicle back up to Flagstaff and it's done. This mm -hmm. is what I feel buyers and sellers need. They need an answer to their problems. And so you have to be resourceful. Right. I agree 100 percent. And if they're motivated, they want you uh, at some extent to take over and help them. And because, you know, the reason a lot of buyers and sellers take over today is because the agents don't, you know, and they're, so they exactly. don't. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, don't let the buyers like um, I, I've seen this quite often. Like if a problem comes up, don't react to their problem. Think about how you're going to resolve the problem. Give them an answer. Don't go, oh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. Think outside the box and think of how you can assist them. Ex absolutely. You take the bull by the horns. That's that's a two song. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway. So, all right. <laughs> all right. So 20 million, just so they have an idea about how many transactions is that last year? Oh, I had about 40, around 40, 38 to 40. 40. And so also you... I cover Tucson, Sonoida and Sierra Vista and Green Valley, Sarita. So I, I care. Um, I cover a, a huge area of Southern Arizona. It's not just Tucson. You do. Yeah, it's great. I just, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I didn't hear that. So basically the basic numbers are your average sale price is right around, right around half a million. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. I love it. Okay. So that's your customer service and I really enjoy that and so forth. And give an idea, like, did you do a lot of business from your sphere, repeat and referral business? Are you all? Oh, there? You know what? That's interesting because this past year was a lot of past clients that I had. Um, it's interesting that you, after being in the business for so many years, that all of a sudden when you start, uh, when they start looking at selling their home or coming back to Tucson after they sold their home because of a job, um, it, it's interesting how it's coming full circle that they're coming back and then contacting me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they love you because their house has gone up so much in value. You know, <laughs> it's, like, it, it's nice when you're the representative of the market when it's awesome. But then when it goes down and they need somebody to short sale it, uh, you know, sometimes not so happy. <laughs> Interesting. Um, a lot of the clients that I had about three, three clients this past year, I sold their home in Tucson. They had to move away for a job and they found out they can work remote and they wanted to come back to Tucson. Wow. Yeah. And so this wasn't from past buyers. It was from past listings. Nice. And I was like, that gave me a, a, a different perspective that I need to stay in touch with those people, not just the buyers that are in Tucson. And yeah. So it's, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a whole different light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I saw it. It's funny you say that because I saw an article yesterday um, and it said that, um, you know, the market is probably, I don't know about in Tucson, but it, all our markets combined, we're probably about five or 6% off of last year's pace. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, and uh, then the article said that's basically because all the pandemic moves are out of the system right now. I mean, the meaning that they're, if you're going to move because of the pandemic, like you, like yours, like I'm, I can work remote me now, I'm moving back or I want a bigger house and have a casita for my bit, my office. Cause I can work out. 
So a lot of that move is now over. So now we're just back to a normal market. And I think with the you know, inventory being so tight, it's still going to keep appreciating, even with the interest rates going up, right? I mean, I haven't even heard anybody mention the interest rates. And they basically- The largest doubled. jump in the industry. Mm -hmm. Well, we've had the largest interest jump. We've had the largest, you know, what do they call that? Inflation. <laughs> we've had- Oh, yeah, gas. Gas is gone. All right, we're not going to get into many, Yeah, how many things are we breaking records on? It's like, let's start. Yeah. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's just but, a different world. Unfortunately, some of them aren't good records. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. But uh, and you know, with listings, um, that's my uh, that's my forte is listings. Um, I take yeah. care of buyers, um, but I really enjoy listings. Um, I've just tapped into more of that market. Yeah, and it sounds like your husband's going to take over some administration and help for you. But it sounds like he'll be working with a few buyers too, right? Oh yes. As a matter of fact, um, I have a lot of buyers. Um, in the past six months, I've actually had more buyers and listings, which is, uh, interesting to me, but again, it comes back from my client base. Mm -hmm. So are you going to give him like, he's going to retire. So we're going to give him like the weekend off and then get right back at it. Or you might give him a week. Oh yeah. I haven't decided. All we right. haven't wrote our contract yet. <laughs> All right. He's analytical. Put everything in writing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Timelines. Always timelines. Got to have timelines. Got to have a time block schedule with timeline. Absolutely. All right. So my favorite questions to ask a rock star like yourself is, okay, so, you know, if you could do this all over again or even from here, what would be the three? You know, I'm a real estate agent and I want to increase my business. What are the three most important things you tell them to focus on? Number one thing is to build your CRM immediately when you start this business. So you don't get behind that you're um, it's that you make it a habit and a routine to keep in touch. And uh, when I first got into real estate, I did the Buffini system and I, I really uh, I, I liked his system because it was reaching out to, and touching people, not just making phone calls and things like that. Um, the one thing I learned is to give uh, to give somebody something of value. And so, for instance, when I write note cards, and I, that's one thing I learned from Buffini is note cards. Um, I, I put a little scratch off lottery ticket in there um, just because it's fun. So they're not just opening up a card and reading something. Um, and then I get calls back like, oh, I want $100. And I was like, oh, cool. And then we get into a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and then also I like to do stop buys um, that I... I go on stop buys about court, um, quarterly. Nice. And so I have a list of my clients that I just give a call and just tell them, hey, I'm going to be in the neighborhood and I had something for you. Can I drop it off? And if they're not going to be home, I'll just drop it off at the front door and let them know. Um, but I find this really works because I'm reaching out to them and stopping by. Right. And uh, just like a seminar I took um, at the convention, I want to be their forever agent. Right. And um, being that forever agent, that means answering their phone calls if yeah. there's a problem with their home. And uh, I just had a situation. Home warranties. I sometimes problems come up with home warranties. Thank goodness I I have a personal relationship with a rep that does my home warranty. And she was able to uh, take care of a problem immediately. But it's those kind of things that buyers are looking for to right. always to be with them throughout the years, not just at the end of a transaction. So true. So true. So, so what I'm hearing is, you know, uh, definitely under promise and over deliver and what you're and by a lot is what I'm hearing with you and mm -hmm. make sure everybody now, and we have that great, you know, VAC 2.0. So make sure everybody's in there. Yeah. They're getting yes. you, you know, dripped on at least a couple of times a month, whether it be the abs, you know, you know, I like the neighborhood report, but there's also the market report, and then there's also newsletters. Oh, let's talk about the neighborhood report. Let's do that, shall we? Yes, because, you know, when I get one, I get them at my home, of course. Um, and I would read them, and I would find them really boring. Like, mm -hmm. hey, I have a buyer. Um, they're looking in your neighborhood and blah, blah, blah. And I want to, you know, I want to buy your home. Or I get a neighborhood report that just has... Um, of course, I'm in real estate, so I understand which homes are which and and how they sold. But the normal consumer doesn't. 
And so when I do a neighborhood report, I make sure that I include the MLS listings so they can comprehend that this was the square footage, this was the lot size, it has a pool or it has solar panels, so they can understand, even though your neighbor's house sold for 800,000 and it was up remodeled and upgraded, what does your house look like? And here is the actual listing and I give them a link to the listing so they can understand um, the difference. And this, what this is stating is that I'm on top of my research. I don't just send out a piece of paper, this is further information. And so it gives me more value to them. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Credibility. That's a, that's a good Credibility. Point. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Okay. So your customer service and your sphere. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. Give another, what would be another great thing to think about to really maximize your business? Well, I just discovered something at the convention and I'm really nice. excited about this. I have a, a new campaign going out and I have the notes here for it. Um, there was a, uh, a booth that had um, it's called Reminder Media mm -hmm. and it's magazines and um, they have uh, three different ones. But the magazines have everything about like uh, uh, home maintenance, home, uh, home repairs, food designs. Uh, spring is coming up and they they gear it towards your area. So it's not like uh, gardening on the East Coast compared to the West Coast. Um, so you send this to them and it has your picture and your information on the front cover. And so it's I'm basically giving something of value again, but I'm not just sending it to my spear, not my, just my clients. I have decided I'm going to implement it with farming. And so I am giving again something of value so they can remember me and give me a call. OK, that's awesome. I love it. I love it. Two really awesome points. Okay. And I have to ask, give them one more. What other things uh, can they do as far as uh, to maximize their business? You know, and I love, I love the forever agent thing too, because that's kind of our brand logo too. It's really good. So when you piggyback on that stuff, it really, you know, because it, you know, it's, it's part of the national campaign as well. So I think that's really smart. Do you know, I did not know that. I just went to the seminar. I didn't know it was part of the whole campaign for Berkshire Hathaway yeah. Home Services. Yeah. Remember how we have a saying every year, right? So about three years ago, that was the saying, you're a forever agent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it does go together. But uh, I guess uh, Dalton, wasn't that his name that uh, yeah. did the presentation? Alan Dalton, one of the smartest men. Yeah, he's so, he's so smart. And he's from Boston, so you have to love him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, especially the accent. Pac the Conrad. Right. He has a wicked accent. All right. He does. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but uh, no, other ways. Um, the most important thing is when you, for instance, when you have a listing and, and this just happened, um, take go beyond the service. Um, for instance, I just had some pictures taken and we staged the inside, but I noticed because it was winter time, the outside wasn't very pretty. And so I went and bought uh, silk flowers and stuck them in all the gardens. Um, then I noticed uh, they had already left. The windows were dirty. Thank goodness I had window cleaner. I had to clean the windows just to make those pictures look good from the inside out. It's, it's all about servicing your client. Right. Servicing them and so they can get top dollar and get the most money out of their property and brutal. Right. And you know, it was so interesting. Um, when I did this, the lady had said, oh, do you do this for all your listings? And it's like, yes, I do. Yep. And, you know, and then you look at MLS and you see a picture of, uh, you know, <laughs> someone, someone using a, you know, iPhone 4. They're all furry. And then they're standing in the mirror. You can see them in the picture. And I'm like, oh, my God, what are these people thinking? No wonder some of us, you know, some, some people have a bad impression of realtors because uh, some people don't take it as seriously as you do, for sure. Yeah. You know, so another thing I do is yep. um, I try to do this about twice a year is I like to gather all my clients that I've had for the past six months and um, do a, a happy hour um, in, in their area so that uh, I can see them again. They can meet other people and we can converse and see if there's any problems that have risen from the cell or if they need any help with pool service or um, I need a window cleaner or I need a, um, I need babysitters um, anything like that. And so um, 
I like to meet with my clients socially also. Nice. So you keep it. Yeah. You know, and it, that's to me, that's, I think that's relative, really important because that's everybody I've been interviewing lately has said the same thing. Like, you know, like yeah. Avi Gore is talking about going out to dinner and meeting him for wine or coffee. Ooh. He rents a park out, you know, mm -hmm. and you're talking about, um, now listen, do you take them to an Irish pub, you know, or do you, how, where do you take them? Uh, there's no fine Irish pubs around here, so oh. I have to take them to a Mexican restaurant so I can get them used to the uh, motif of the area, the traditional uh, area. Uh, mm -hmm. I got gotcha. you. Okay, cool. So we do All our right. <laughs> Well, I really appreciate it. We're at time now. I know you're busy. you got things to do. Catherine, I just want to say thank you very much for taking your time out today. This was very oh, educational. My pleasure. Helpful. All right. And you keep rocking it, okay? Everybody would do I this should. again on Thursday. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Rick. Thank you. See you, everybody.